All right, for DIY project number 22, we have a two-string cigar box instrument that I call the Midnight Special. And if you look down the fingerboard here, hopefully I can get the light to hit it just right, you can see the words Midnight Special are wood-burned into the fingerboard. And then also, if you look at the headstock here, it's got a railroad nail with a 23 on it. And the song Midnight Special was written in... 1923. Uh, so this guitar, where it got its name is while I was working on it, I started calling it Midnight because all of the hardware, I don't know if we can see all this real well, but the, the nut there on the jack is actually a black nut. I don't know if that shows up very well. But um, the string for rules there are black. The nut, string retainer, tuners are all black. The screws that are used are black. So it's very much all the accessories almost on this, oh, the knob too. And almost all the accessories are, are black, where on most of the uh, similar instruments that I've built, they've been gold or silver. So while I was working on it, I started calling it Midnight. Um, that's where the name came from. Uh, anyway, so where this started is with this really odd shaped cigar box. Now I found this cigar box at a local guitar, uh, excuse me, a local cigar shop, not guitar shop. And this is the actual top of the box. And I thought that that was so cool. I was like, I gotta make something out of it. So I grabbed this along with a few others. By the way, this particular cigar shop, they rarely, I've yet to see them have like the standard cigar box that everybody likes, the standard kind of, you know, Macanudo or whatever cigar box, they always have oddly shaped ones. So I don't know if they have a, if somebody comes in and kind of cherry picks them or maybe they have a contract for the normal size ones with us with a third party or something, but they always have really odd shaped cigar boxes. Um, but they sell them for very cheap, like a buck 50. So I went in there and I got four and this was one of the ones I got. And some of the others you've seen in some of my other DIY projects, like the cigar box preamp or cigar box foot stomper and whatnot. But um, this particular one, I wasn't really sure what to do with because it was so thin. Um, it was number one, the box was thin, but the top, if you look at, you know, the, the logo's cool, but hopefully the, the light will see, there you go. The top of the box is very thick, so it's not gonna vibrate very well. Um, however, I flipped it over on the back, or, you know, top now in this orientation, is actually quite thin. Um, but it was made of white cedar. So I didn't really like the look of it, especially with the rest of the cigar box being so, you know, that, that stark, dark color. So I started staining the box. And I wasn't even really sure what I was gonna make with it at this point in time, but I put a few coats of stain on the um, on this side of the box. And it actually came out looking really nice and really deep and, and pretty. So I was like, oh, I gotta make something out of this now. So um, CB Giddy is a company that makes some kits like you know, I actually built one of their kits for one of my previous DIY projects, their Tin Pan Alley kit. Um, they make kits, and they make a kit called the Pure and Simple. The idea, it's like their easiest kit to build. And it's basically like this. It's basically this idea. And they use a box, put the neck on top of it, do a wooden bridge, and that's it. So basically, I kind of copied their kit idea, but put my own spin on it. Um, the internals inside here, you can see there's a volume knob. There is a a piezo right about here, right underneath this side of the bridge. There's a piezo sensor, and um, it's wired to the jack, or to the, the pot and then the jack. Um, additionally, I wanted to make sure it was well grounded because I have had some hum issues on some of my previous builds. So I put a metal plate like right around here, underneath on the box top or the box bottom, I guess. Um, but I, I soldered that so it has a nice solid grounding area. Um, I put several screws to hold the top closed, you can see there, so it didn't rattle or, you know, get any... It's very solid now. Nothing really rattles or anything on it. Um, but I did that, and then I just put two strings on it, so you can see there's a couple of string ferrules that just go through the, the neck there and uh, are just glued, pressed in, and then glued just to make sure they don't come out. I had a little bit of a snafu there on some of the, the corners, but it, I kind of put some wood fill around it, stained around it. It looks pretty good. Um, Overall, this is also the first time I've done anything with a scarf joint, um, which is kind of new. It's new for me anyway, uh, which kind of ended up looking neat. Um, and just really pleased with the way this came out. Um, so additionally, 
when I went to put, oh, there's the one thing that I did not do black. You can see the fret markers along there. I initially would burn them into the fretboard because it kept with the dark theme. But the problem was I couldn't see them when I was playing, so they weren't helping me any. So I went back and just took a Dremel and just kind of ground the black off of the wood burns. Um, so it's not perfect. It's definitely a little, when you look at it up close, I don't know if you can see that. If the, It's not perfect, but you can see where the wood burns are and then how I kind of ground out the black on a lot of the wood burns. But it ended up looking pretty nice uh, overall, and it helps you a lot to see it. Uh, when you're playing. So that actually is the only thing that's not really black on it, but for good reason. Um, but overall, this instrument came out really neat. Now, initially, the, the CB Giddy kit, the pure and simple kit, and my original plan was for a three box, three, excuse me, a three string cigar box guitar, which is the typical way that it's done. However, when I started putting this together, I thought, oh, yeah, I should do something different. So I thought maybe a two string. So a typical two-string guitar or uh, cigar box instrument, whatever you want to call it, is typically tuned in a fifth. So you have like a, a G and a D or, you know, a, a, an E and a B or, or whatever. Um, so that's typically how it's tuned. Well, when I restrung my Tin Pan Alley a couple months back, I actually did a video about that, and I went to lighter strings on it. So I took a, a standard uh, electric guitar string pack, and I took the A, the D, D and the G out of that pack and put them on the, the Tin Pan Alley and I liked the way it played with that gauge better than the ones that I originally had on it. And I kind of thought to myself it'd be kind of neat to use the low B and the high E, or excuse me, the low E and the high B um, and do a fifth that way. But when I went to find the pack, the B string was missing. So I had the low E and the high E. And then I just said, well, what the hell? I'll do the low E and the high E, and I'll tune it EE, -E, and it'll be two octaves apart. So that is exactly how this one is tuned. It's got literally a low E and a high E from a standard six string guitar pack. Hopefully it's in tune, I haven't, I just picked it up, but it's pretty close. So you've got a low E, and then you've got an E two octaves above. So you've got a two octave spread on this instrument, which gives it kind of an interesting droney sound. And again, that was just kind of happy accident. Now what's funny is right after I got this whole thing strung up, I found the missing B string. Like literally after I got the thing strung up, it just had fallen out of the pack. So had I found it earlier, it might not have been strung like this, but you know what? I'm going with it. This whole thing just kind of seems to kind of be a chance build anyway. Just everything about it kind of seems to be chance. So I'm going with it, but here she is, the Midnight Special. Uh, now you know what she looks like, let's see what she sounds like. Okay, so because of this, the way this thing is tuned, it's two octaves between the strings. So it plays a little different than a standard um, guitar or even cigar box guitar. Uh, additionally, the string gauges are very different. Uh, I don't know if you can see that well, but the string gauges are very different. So the strumming feels a little different than a standard guitar or something. So it does have a unique feel, but that said, you can still do your basic uh, acoustic blues, this sort of a thing. Your, um... plug it in and give it a little overdrive, um, you can do kind of a droning bass note thing. Mm -hmm. 